came here first in 2013 with Dr. Norgrove Penny. And it was during that trip that we went up to Kumi and explored a hospital that he had done tremendous work at uh, years before when he lived in Uganda. Kumi is one of the poorest districts in Uganda. Uh, the people there living really a subsistence living. And this hospital was meeting the needs of very, very compromised children. And while visiting this hospital, we encountered um, a group of about 100 children who were having surgery for something called gluteal fibrosis. And we were absolutely shocked. We had never seen anything like it. I was particularly shocked because having done all that work in Kumi District, I didn't recall seeing these kids in the past. And now they were there. What's happened? Did we just miss them? Or had there been something of an epidemic where we suddenly saw this number of children with this condition? These patients have been in the community and have not been able to benefit on rehabilitation. They have difficulties in going to school, walking to school, sitting in class for a long time. Uh, they cannot do activities at home. You find that they, their teeth, their sitting position is abnormal. Um, you find that most of them, uh, even in their own homes, they, they cannot sit properly. Culturally, they, they, are, they are unaccepted and that just affects their self-esteem. This disability has affected lots of children, especially in Kumi, which is my hometown. What was it about this part of the country that seemed to have so many of these children? Was it uh, that there was more malaria? We understood and believed that they got their gluteal fibrosis from quinine, which was used quite a bit in the treatment of malaria, and we knew that quinine was very toxic to the muscles, causing damage to the muscles. Was it a particular practice of injections into the buttock muscles? Vincent was born normally and he was fine. He got malaria and then uh, he was taken to the health facility and the private clinics where he was given the injections. Until one day he, he told the father that, ah, Daddy, sometimes when I go to school, my legs get tired, my hips are paining. Even when I go to class, I get tired of sitting. So, so when he saw that, he told the dad, I think you need to take me to the hospital because I don't, I don't seem to be fine. So after that 2013 trip, I went back to the United States and learned everything I possibly could about gluteal fibrosis and then started coming back to do various research projects trying to better understand gluteal fibrosis its incidents here in different parts of Uganda and again trying to explore ways to best treat the condition. And Dr. Penny and I have been doing that research together over these last few years. We recognized we had to do something to help solve the problem. We needed data to be able to present to the ministries of health and others that this was a problem that needed resolution on a public health front. But we also had many children who needed help. Why shouldn't we operate on 100 children and relieve them of their disability. And with those 100, to, to look at them carefully and trying to understand why, why they were the way they were and then to follow these kids for the next two to five years to see how things worked out for them. Did our surgeries work well over the long run, not just over the short run? We felt like that was the best next step because we had done a retrospective study looking at the children that we met in 2013 um, and saw them five years later to assess their outcomes and they had good results from their surgery. And so we wanted to then provide that surgery to more children and then ideally to be able to follow them over time and see how they do. Okay.
Okay, Vincent says uh, when he gets the surgery, he will be able to do many things well. He wasn't uh, able to pick up things from down well. Even digging was a bit of a challenge, even sweeping. So he believes after he has benefited from the surgery, he will be able to dig. He will go to school five times a week. He has been going for three. So he feels that the, uh, the, pain, the pain will go down. There's very little written in the medical literature about this. We had very little to go on. We chose to accept the procedures that were being done at Kumi Hospital by the National Ugandan Orthopedic Surgeons at Kumi, uh, particularly Dr. Owori and Dr. Malinga, who now had huge experience in this particular procedure. We recognized that resources were very hard to come by in Uganda. They're a poor country. This hospital struggled to meet its financial needs, to keep the electricity on and to pay their staff. So we wanted to actually assist by covering the surgical costs for the surgeons and the surgery to be done. And so we raised $30,000 in Canada. Now think of this. For $300, we could treat a child with gluteal fibrosis, give them everything they needed in the hospital to give them a good result, including their assessment, their surgery, their physiotherapy, and their follow-up. This was such a bargain by Canadian standards. And so I went around our friends and colleagues in Victoria, British Columbia, and we raised $30,000 to cover the surgical needs of 100 children. And we came out with that and started this surgical camp as they describe it in Uganda. Of all of that uh, heavy hospital bills that they could have paid, the majority of them could not afford for all those years. You see some of them have grown higher that uh, they were not able to pay, but the visitors have volunteered to help them paid and they're only contributing 10,000 shillings, that consultation fee. That is only what they are paying, and that's why they're happy. <laughs> so what I've told them, I'm just thanking them for trusting us, and also told them that uh, our visitors have arrived, and uh, we shall be examining them and documenting a few things. This was a situation where, where we came to encourage and assist our national surgeons to do their job and to help them uh, standardize the surgical procedure. So when he tried to bring him to the hospital, he realized that he could not manage to get the money that was needed. But through the outreach clinic which was conducted, he was identified. So one of the CBRA workers, they told him they were going to give a free service. So that's how he brought the child to surgery. I'm very happy. He's very happy. The issue with gluteal fibrosis is that this is a disorder actually caused by medical treatment. This makes it particularly tragic. There's enough disability in children in Kumi that we don't need extra disability from medical treatment. It's inadvertent. It's, it wasn't understood that the treatment could do this. But what happens is that quinine is a very powerful drug that can be injected uh, to treat malaria. Now, it's not recommended that it be injected intramuscularly because it has a really toxic effect on the muscles and nerves in the vicinity. But in life-threatening situations, particularly cerebral malaria, it can be life-saving. It's an inexpensive drug and it's been used for many years. There's also a cultural sense in the community that a painful injection is more powerful than an oral medication. So this thought that these that quinine was overused in children who had fevers because of the fear of malaria and the deadly uh, effects that malaria could have and that this is what provoked this outbreak. So the quinine injures the muscle causing this 
the death of muscle cells, which then heal with fibrosis, with a fibrotic scar reaction. The gluteus maximus muscle, the muscle that forms the bulk of the buttock, is a very, very important muscle for walking and for the functioning of the leg. It's a powerful muscle. And if it becomes contracted or constricted, it means that one cannot flex the hip. It limits flexion of the hip. So the idea that you can bring your knee up towards your chest becomes compromised or becomes limited. And the only way you can get the leg up close to your chest is by going out to the side into external rotation. So this contracture uh, that happens in the muscle results in a dense, thick scar tissue. And the surgeon then needs to release all of the scar so the hip can move and so the muscle can work. Then the challenge is that all surgical wounds, all wounds, all injuries, heal by scar. That's the body's way of healing. So we don't want this to reform again. Uh, so the children have to start immediately on exercises to maintain range of motion of the hip so that as the scar tissue forms to heal the operation, it heals in the lengthened state rather than the shortened state. So doing the surgical procedure in a precise way that our Ugandan colleagues have invented and developed, um, we have proven that this is a safe technique and that it releases hip contracture. Many of these children went from a range of motion of approximately 30 degrees of hip flexion to a range in the 120 to 130 degree range. A dramatic improvement in hip flexion. The normal hip flexion would be around 140 degrees. So to go from a hip that would not bend more than 30 degrees with a surgical procedure in the operating room 25 minutes later that had a range of motion of 130 degrees is very dramatic. Even as a surgeon, I would say, it's a dramatic thing and, and a very, uh, for me, a very moving thing to think that we can be so effective, so simply, so quickly. There are very few surgical conditions we can say that about. Of course, the rehabilitation is long and arduous. These children will have to keep up their exercises for a series of months. But we know within five days they're feeling a lot better, have better range of motion, are already walking better, are already squatting better. So it's only going from strength to strength from that point onward. As long as they keep doing the exercises, our very talented and dedicated physiotherapists have taught them. We have a privilege to have a hundred patients being operated and rehabilitated. And we are also going to follow them up close to five years. The first follow-up will be after one month. Then we shall have the next one after six months. And then one year, two years. Then we will see whether the rehabilitation they have been given has changed their way of life, whether they are able to go to school normally, whether they are able to sit long in class. At the end of the day, 112 children were operated on. Uh, all within budget, and uh, we were just so pleased that we could do this work. It was very busy, very intensive. We worked often to late hours at night uh, getting the task done. And it was so inspirational to see these kids within three or four days of their surgery doing their physiotherapy and already with joyful looks on their faces as they anticipated a life of less disability and more inclusiveness in their world than they had sustained before. Vincent, what would you want to become in the future? Now that you're going to go to school. A doctor. <laughs> he wants to become a doctor. Mm, yeah. He says he wants to have a handshake with you because he's very happy. <laughs> Gluteal fibrosis is one of those big problems that we have in the country. Uh, and these are very unnecessary problems and uh, they tend to get all these adverse effects that do not allow them to do most of the bare minimum that a child is supposed to do and enjoy their lives and the other challenge is that the patients are always in pain so for us to do these surgeries and help alleviate the pain and make their lives better was very very fruitful and fulfilling for me as a surgeon.
it was a very exciting time for me because I got to learn uh, a new technique from what I was used to doing much faster much easier and uh, we got to do lots of surgeries and uh, lots of kids got to benefit from the surgical camp that we had and we learned a lot just from interacting with the kids and the families about how this is affecting their lives um, the negative impact it has on their daily functions at home, their ability to go to school. The, the work that we just did up in Kumi was impactful not only because of the direct effect it had on the children who had the surgery, but it also increased our understanding of, of the impact of this condition on the family and the child. I had no idea they suffered this much pain. We asked them to do an analog pain scale to tell us out of 10 where they felt their pain was on average and almost all the children chose something in the realm of seven eight or nine out of ten they their lives were obviously severely handicapped by pain and this was a surprise to me i had no idea it was quite so painful we knew that the condition caused difficulty sitting and squatting and that this was a great impairment in village life but i didn't know they had that much hip pain and i didn't know they had that much back pain. This was a real insight and a real powerful motivator that we should do something to help them because they would carry this into their adult life. Another insight that we gained, we decided we should take x-rays of the kids' hips just to make sure we weren't missing other conditions that might mimic gluteal fibrosis. And we saw all kinds of adaptive changes in the bone because of the gluteal fibrosis. Not other conditions, but how the gluteal fibrosis had affected the bone growth and the shape of the head of the femur and the hip joint. And this was a completely new insight. We knew of no other literature or information that explained this. This was new information. So. The fact that we could be as intensive as we were this time, to really look at it with a hard look of assessment, uh, created new insights that I think also create new areas for research in the future. We need to know how these kids are going to do over the long run now with these hips that have been shaped by their gluteal fibrosis. Twofold goals. One is to care for these children as best as we possibly can for those who already have gluteal fibrosis and probably even more importantly is to prevent future cases of gluteal fibrosis from happening here in Uganda and, and throughout um, the areas of Africa where this is occurring. We have come to visit three children in one family. They have had uh, gluteal fibrosis and they have benefited from surgery. Seeing them, they have done very well. They are able to sit, they are able to participate in family activities. The family is happy. Sarah was worked in 2014 and Mary was worked on 2017 and David the same. I'm going to program so, now she says eh, she has a family of eight children, eh? mm. but the first three all were, were damaged by quinine, eh? so they couldn't squat, they couldn't bend, they couldn't sit well, but she's thanking the program for helping her first three children. Mm. So, Naka Ulurone is so Americasi, I want to go to Abuma and Dajula Kineteta Kone Jasidu Elukwana. So after the surgery, he has seen a lot of changes in their lives. They are much better and he does not have to take them to the hospital as he did before. So he also has time that he can look for some money to pay for their fees. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, they have a lot of happiness. They are really very happy because you could hardly see their children sit the way they are. So over there, they are, they are trying to boil maize. And that maize, they are going to take it to sell so that they can get some money for school fees. Our team from Canada and the United States that came out was actually a very small team consisting of people who were mainly concerned about the assessment of the children uh, and the financing and making sure it all worked well, the encouragement. 
The work was done by our Ugandan colleagues at Kumi Hospital. All the work, from the surgeons, to the nurses in the operating room, to the anesthesia, to the physiotherapy, and particularly the community workers who knew these children, transported them to the hospital, shepherded them through the process, made the parents aware, and then continue with the follow-up afterwards at community level. This was an indigenously Ugandan project and we have to give all the credit to them. And it's been a particular pleasure and privilege to work alongside them in what has been a very effective and humbling project to uh, participate in. This year we went and operated on 110 patients with mitral fibrosis and we've changed the lives of all those children, so thank you.